hear it really in the music, you know, it's, it, I mean, a lot of people, reports are saying it's autobiographical. A lot of people are linking it to the fact that he wrote it in three days, 1960, which is also the year he joined the Communist Party. And he wrote his string quartet number no. eight, which is the basis for this uh, version by Barshai. And Shostakovich himself has heard this music. And he, in some reports, um, it's, it's um, suggested that he said this was even better than the string quartet version. Today on stage, we have four first violins, four second, four violas, three cellos, two basses. So it's a very reduced string orchestra. It's also not the kind of Singapore symphony that audiences are usually used to because we have usually 14 first violins, 16 first violins. But at the same time, I think with the context of this music, that it has been so powerful with just four in its original quartet version. Now that we have a slightly enlarged string orchestra, I think we still keep very much this musical continuity and the context of this piece itself. It's a very strange piece. I was very intrigued by it the first time I heard it. It was a recording, Borodin Quartet. And it has so much musically that's painful, melancholic, but at the same time, it's also very calculated. You know, it's really a kind of contrast between the free and also the restraint. It begins in the first movement, there are five of them. Uh, in the first movement, um, almost a kind of quasi-fuga. You have this canonic entrances, not very regular. Um, singing his, his, his name. Um, Re Mi Do Si, which is D S C H S for E flat and H for for a B a H for for B natural, and so they play Re Mi E flat Do C B natural, which is sort of D S C H's signature, his name, Dmitri Shostakovich, and everyone is murmuring the name from the cellos, basses to violas, second violins, first violins, and then everyone whispers it very pianissimo, senza vibrato. So you can feel this very tense, very unsettling atmosphere. Here with, with the SSO, we've tried to do this three different ways. It's, the music is absolutely the same, pianissimo. But the first time we, we play it on the A string, senza vibrato, so very brittle sound. And then the second time we, we move it to the D string. And so it's a, a little bit higher positions, but con vibrato, but still pianissimo. So now you hear this darker sound, but with a more weeping, uh, sad, singing, mourn, mournful kind of music. And then the third time when it appears, it, because it's, it, it starts with an E natural. And so we, we, we play it on the, on the E string, which is in most cases, violinists don't really like to play it on open string in, in, in a kind of music like this, because it's so, it's, it's so bright and out of place. But in this circumstance, um, I just thought, you know, it works very well. And, and the SSO violinists are so cooperative in exploring this idea. So I think we're going to get a very nice uh, result out of that. And of course, this piece uh, has a lot of solos. You have in the first movement already, Yong Han uh, playing very beautiful entrance, this whisper. In a whole, the first movement is like a prelude, fuga, canonic, calculated, but also scary. And then it leads into the second movement, which is a very fast, relentless, powerful, very chromatic. Every part shines, you know, the, 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 the violas play very important music, the second violins, the cellos. It starts as eight bar phrases, eight bar phrases, and then it goes into four plus three plus two, and then he, he comes back with these bunches, but it's seven bars long. So, you know, just thinking about this makes me very alert. I, I, I feel like I'm back to JC and, and studying all my AMATs and, and all that. It's very calculative. It, it really makes me think about structure and phrases. And when I sort of try to understand this a little bit more, it really puts into context the kind of academic rigor that Shostakovich has placed into his music. It's, it's nothing um, comfortable. 
it throws people off. And I think Shostakovich has been quoted to say that this kind of Jewish dance music, folk music, uh, means a lot to him or, or meant a lot, you know, really evoked some kind of emotion in him because it sounds on the surface very happy, but it's full of despair. And maybe this re reflects the kind of history uh, the Jews have, you know, all, all these thousands of years. And that's how he ends his, his second movement with this molto perpetuo, this constant drive with this dance. Then we move on to the third movement, which is, which is one of my favorite Shostakovich uh, little pieces, you know, because it's, it's a waltz and he does this kind of dances very well. Uh, you have also the, the, the second movement of the fifth symphony as well, you know, this kinds of things, very sarcastic, very painful. Um, it's almost like laughing at himself, self-critical. It's, like it's like a kind of limping with the world, you know, we're dancing. So we feel like, you know, we have a dance partner and we're moving along and suddenly the dance partner just throws you aside or, or steps on your foot or... You have this uneasiness with this Shostakovich. And then it goes into something very special, which is the cello concerto uh, theme, the first cello concerto, which was written also very close to, to 1960, you know, close to when this piece was, was first composed. There is a very big uh, cello solo, very Shostakovich kind of melody. You have a, it's diatonic, but very chromatic, and then sometimes he uses the flat second, the flat six and all that. Very Shostakovich kind of construction. Then you have the fourth movement, which is the most powerful thing. It's the climax of this piece. Um, so we have five movements. Uh, so it just happens at the fourth movement. Again, you know, this whole uh, golden ratio, you know, around the 66%, 70% kind of thing. And it's very powerful because it's not, uh, it's not loud, it's not fast, it's not um, kind of triumphant. And we think, okay, climax should be in the finale. But he, he does give us something loud, you know, it's this uh, effect of, you know, you know, someone, this uh, KGB, someone, loan shark, I don't know, someone at the door just knocking. And the tempo is quite fast, it's 130, 38, um, so it should be ram pam pam. You know, I, I just thought, uh, especially with a smaller string section, Getting a slower tempo gives slightly more time to make that sound and also to make it more threatening. So we, I think we're trying to do it slightly slower. Sorry, Shostakovich. <laughs> but I, I think uh, it, it gets that feeling out. So you have this two contrast in this, in this movement, right? It starts with this knocking. It's a three bar phrase. And then you have do, 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 and then three bar phrase, but it's um, singing. It's not short. So Pum, pum, pum is short, but then is very long, very horizontal, and full of vibrato, really wide vibrato that, that we are asking um, the musicians to play together. And you have this crying, weeping, and then you have this guy at the door and saying, you know, come out, it's your, your time. And then the cello plays this very, very brittle, transparent, translucent, translucent kind of music. You have the feeling that it's the Ling Huan Chu Qiao, you know, and it's just one wisp of smoke going out into the air and you're looking down on, on the people. Uh, there's this, really this kind of spooky effect and it's the, it's the seventh man. <laughs> and then it goes into the fifth movement. But this is almost, you know, if the beginning, if the first movement is like a opening, a preface, then this is like the uh, prologue, this is like the epilogue, the ending of it all. What is really special is that at the very end, we, we decided to have you know, at a certain spot near the end, just the four quartet musicians playing, the principal players of the SSO playing. That really goes back to the original quartet version, you know. And we get this very intimate kind of sound almost like autobiographical and just dying down before the whole orchestra comes back for one final so you hear this perfect fifth at the very end and this perfect fifth is also a kind of idea which you can find everywhere in this in this work it's very empty the perfect fifth is so resonant you know though so it's such a common interval very resonant, but at the same time empty. You know, you hear, 
if you think about the harmonic series, you have Do. If, if it's a C, you know, Do, Do, and then you have a So. But from this, the human ear interprets this as a, as a major. We, we almost hear the third, uh, the major third. But in Shostakovich's case, he doesn't put in a minor third, so he doesn't say this is a minor chord, but because he removes it and because in context of the whole music, you hear this and you hear the fifth as such a sad, painful, empty kind of uh, a diet, a kind of chord, if you will. You can hear almost the minor third there. It's really quite a remarkable thing. Hello, my name is Kachun. Nice to see you all again. So I'm just hoping to welcome you to our concert, which is going to be on Cystic Life. And uh, it features three pieces of music, Debussy, La Premidi, which has Zingta on the flute solo. There's also Wagner's Siegfried Idyll in its original version for 13 instruments. And also Shostakovich's um, Chamber Symphony, which is actually a version by Barshai on his original eighth string quartet. So see you.